Hey guys, Rob from ProRes Blog here, www.prorestblog.blogspot.com. Hey, today I'm going to do part 2 of uh, World Class Championship Wrestling, Disc 40. The opening match on this disc had uh, Kelly Kaniski versus Cowboy Scott Casey. This was an absolutely horrible match. Um, I just can't really describe it. It, it. it looks like Kelly Kaniski is honestly special ed. I mean, it was really bad. Um, Casey isn't really much better. He's a decent look and all, but I don't know. I've never seen him re be really decent or anything. And I think that's a lot of the reason he ended up as no one in the WF because he wasn't impressive at all. Um, but yeah, this was just bad. This was just so clunky and awful and it just didn't work at all. Um, it, it was honestly one of the worst matches I've ever seen. So it, it looked like a Divas match or something. It was really that bad. Um, Scott Casey ended up winning by DQ, by DQ here when uh, Cornette and uh, Bobby Eaton ran in to try to retrieve Jim Cornette's jacket. Scott Casey had a hold of Jim Cornette's jacket and he wouldn't give it up, so they jumped in near the end and uh, tried to grab the jacket back. Um, I'll tell you what, this match was so bad that Cornette and Eaton jumping in were the best workers in this match, and they weren't even in the stupid match. They, uh, they actually sold pretty well when Eaton nailed them. So, uh, <laughs> they were honestly the best workers, which is really sad. Um, so they jumped in and then, uh, Kabuki made the save with, uh, Sunshine and they, um, they kind of just scared off the heels. Uh, Sunshine came in too, but like I said, uh, it's Sunshine and she's a woman and it's not really going to take on, uh, Beautiful Bobby. Next up, we had a Texas heavyweight title match with, uh, champion Gino Hernandez versus Brian Adias. Gino got the win here in in a few minutes, and he beat Brian with the schoolboy. Um, this was the most basic and probably textbook match I've ever seen. Uh, this was just, they, they really didn't try anything special here. They worked some headlocks, and, you know, Gino cheated a little bit, and then they just started exchanging pinfalls kind of out of nowhere. And um, Gino ended up getting the win with, with a kick to the gut and then a, <laughs> a schoolboy. Um, this was really nothing of note here. I mean, it was a pretty lame duck match, and... I mean, the crowd liked it, but uh, you couldn't really get much more basic than this. That's all I could say. We then had another match. We had uh, the one-man gang versus the great Kabuki. Gary Hart was in the gang's corner. Kabuki did his usual uh, um, nunchuck demonstration before the match. And um, as the match began, we had a lot of Gary Hart talking to one-man gang because gang was kind of creeped out by Kabuki. Uh, they really stalled for about five minutes, and that was boring, but uh, it's the 80s. So, um, yeah, just a lot of stalling. Um, when they did start, it wasn't very good. Kabuki's punches and strikes and pretty much everything are just awful. Uh, I, he's trying and all, but it just doesn't look good. And uh, it's not going to look good. And, um, yeah, um, they, they brought a little bit. You know, Gang got a really good clothesline in and threw Kabuki on the steps in a pretty light and not damaging manner. And um, Kabuki kicked out the one-man Gang over the top rope, which was kind of cool. He then went after uh, Gary Hart, but um, Gang stopped him. Um, he choked out Gary Hart, and uh, he did miss, um, excuse me, he green missed one man Gang somewhere in the process here. The finish, as I mentioned, came when uh, Gary Hart got in the ring, and he threw uh, the one man Gang a chain, and he used it on Kabuki, and they um, they called the match there. Uh, after the bell, um, Kabuki missed the Gang, and then he... Um, and then he went to go choke Gary Hart, and that was about it. Both both heels uh, walked out of there. Uh, like I said, this really wasn't very good. Um, Gang was fine, but Kabuki's just not good. He did <laughs> just really not good. That's all I could say. We then had a match. Um, we had a false cut anywhere match from uh, Kerry Von er with Kerry Von Erich versus Terrace Balba. Obviously, as you can tell, these aren't from the same year or time frame. So uh, this was like 1989 as opposed to the match before, which was like 85 or 86. Again, we had uh, lots of stall in here. We had uh, Skandor Akbar kept talking to um, Balba and, you know, Von Erich just kind of dealing with it. They like threatened each other and then they went outside on the ring and they brawled a little bit. Um, Balba really headbutted the crap out of Von Erich. And um, when they jumped back in, Von Erich went for the discus punch and um, Balba blocked it and absolutely waffled him and laid him out. They, uh, they they went to the break, and then they ended up back on the floor, and uh, Von Erich punched out Balba, and he landed right on the table, and uh, he threatened to put the claw on him, but he didn't get the chance. Balba then uh, 
went for a headbutt near the post, and of course he ended up headbutting the post, which wasn't very smart. We then went back in the ring, and we kind of went to the finish with uh, Von Eric teasing doing the Iron Claw, but he couldn't get it on. Instead, uh, Balba put his own claw on to uh, the surprise of everybody. And they said, whoa, 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 what's this? It's Balba with a claw of his own. And uh, Balba ended up putting the claw on Von Eric for probably a good three to four minutes easy. And um, he he slowly but surely laid out Von Eric, and he put him down on the mat, and then he jumped on top of him, and uh, he got the win. He, he busted him open, and um, he just wouldn't let go. He kept on the claw for an extra few minutes, and they actually had to stretch or carry out, which was surprising. Um, yeah, I, I really like this one. Bulba beat Von Eric with the Mongolian claw here. Um, carry had to be stretched out, and uh, I enjoyed this. Uh, you know, Bulba's not the most physically imposing or anything, but uh, he's a pretty fun brawler, and uh, I like the way he struck. Uh, excuse me, the way he strike people. Uh, there was really good heat because, you know, it was a, it was a Von Erichs match. And uh, the crowd was pretty into this because it was surprising to see Von Erich go down. Um, like I said, the early parts of this were annoying, but near the end it got pretty good. So uh, I enjoyed this. I gave this one three stars, three and a half stars. And um, the announcers really sold it well. Uh, they really put it over. It was a big moment because it was. And, you know, it's like, hey, you know, this doesn't happen very often. So uh, I enjoyed this one. And uh, I think you guys will, too. So, overall, um, I really only like the one match on this disc. I, I like Kerry Von Erich versus Balba. The rest uh, wasn't really for me. Um, Kaniski match was really, really bad. One of the worst I've ever seen. Um, the Geno match was totally bland in textbook. Uh, Gang versus Kabuki wasn't much better, unfortunately. But uh, Kerry Von Erich versus Terrace Balba was quite fun. Um, I don't really re recommend this part of the disc because part one was a lot more fun. But uh, I did enjoy the Kerry Von Erich versus uh, Balba match. Alright everyone, this is Rob from www.prowestblog.blogspot.com, signing out.